First question is from Alfonso Morning. Should I take creatine if I'm trying to lose weight? Yes, you should. Creatine, because creatine promotes muscle building, right? And it does so through a few different mechanisms. One is through the, the replenishing of the ATP. ATP is in muscle energy that's responsible for strength. When there's more ATP, you're going to be a little stronger. That sends a louder muscle building signal. It also <clears throat> volumizes. It's called cell volumization, right? Volumizes the cells and muscle because it, it attracts more water. So this isn't bloat. So it's not like you're bloated where there's water outside the muscle. But rather, the muscle itself has more fluid within it. That also stimulates a little bit of muscle growth. It speeds up recovery, so your body recovers a little faster. And then indirectly from this, it'll help with fat loss because as we've talked about on the podcast uh, you know, at least a million times, building muscle is a, a very effective way to burn body fat through the metabolism boosting effects. And, and, and by the way, you, anytime you're, you're, whether you're lose, trying to lose weight, trying to gain weight, doesn't matter, your goal should be to build muscle because building muscle, of course, contributes to weight gain, right? So you're trying to get bigger. You want to build muscle. Obviously, that's easy. But even if you're getting leaner, you still want to do things to try to build muscle. Now, you might not build muscle because it's hard to build muscle while you're getting leaner. But at the very least, you minimize any muscle loss, which tends to be inevitable with a cut. So creatine, at the very least, especially if you're advanced, will prevent some of the muscle loss that's almost inevitable to happen yeah. when you're on a cut. I, I think this comes from the the fear of the water retention still. I was actually just talking oh, yeah. to uh, a listener of ours who's also getting ready for a show right now. She's In fact, she's in peak week right now, and she was like asking me questions about uh, the information that her coach was giving her. And her coach was uh, pulled her off of creatine the the final two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, why? He goes, well, he, he wants to cut back on the water retention. I said, well, it holds water in your muscle bellies. You you want that. Like, that's a that's advantageous when you right. get on stage. You want to be filled. It's ideal for performance, yeah. Yeah, ideal for performance, ideal and also looks. for looks. Yeah, you and know, looks. Yeah, yeah. You, want, you want to hold the water in your muscle bellies. And his uh, argument back to her was that, the it it does not uh you, your body doesn't dictate where it's going to hold water it holds water everywhere not that's not how it works i know so i said it's absolutely the opposite of it you in fact you taking creatine will help ensure that the water is being held right. in your muscle bellies versus it being subcutaneously held so uh that's i think that if and then you're talking about somebody who's helping uh competitors coaching lots of people and people are looking up to for information so there's still yeah. this idea that creatine bloats and holds water in your body and it does but in the muscle bellies and that is something that you want it's the same thing that uh, i used to think it's ridiculous when you'd see the amount of water that these competitors would cut now i reduced my water intake but i would not cut it completely because i wouldn't want to have what they call the flat look when i get up on stage i want my muscle bellies full of water and, and carbohydrates. And so the idea was to deplete leading into it and then load with some water and carbohydrates so it fills that well, up. Well, didn't you even increase your water intake substantially so that way you could kind of bring it back to baseline going into peak? It's exact, I did this exact same thing with sodium. So I, I for most of my uh, prep, I would sodium load and water load so my body would get used to my, and I'd get all the way up to three gallons a day. So I was drinking three gallons a day. I don't remember the exact milligrams, but I was doing at least two, three X the amount of sodium that was normal for me. I was adding like two big old dill pickles a day and then salting a lot of my food and stuff. So I was doing that all the way. And then what I, all I did when I got to peak week was I, I pulled back on it. So I didn't cut sodium. I just went from doing two to you three You went from X. excessive to normal. Yes, because I you still want that. And, and yeah. by the way, this is information that Adam is sharing. For most of you listening and watching, doesn't it, this does not important for you. Right. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. And I, I know people, and this is this yeah. part annoys the hell out of me. People be like, oh, I'm going to go to the beach uh, you know, on Friday. Should I you know, watch my sodium and my water on take? That only matters if you're shredded. Like You have to be really, really lean. Yeah. Like single yeah. single digit body fat percentage, then it matters. But if you're just lean, or if you're not lean, it makes no difference. And so, watching your sodium intake and manipulating your water in order to look better at the beach 
waste of time. And, and the same thing goes for this creatine question. Yes. If you are afraid yeah. of holding a little bit of extra water, uh, but your goal is to lean out and build muscle, uh, creatine is a great idea. Yeah. Um, and again, think of it this way. This is a good example, right? Imagine a balloon, right? If I blow a balloon up with air, it looks fuller and tighter. If I let the air out, it gets flabbier and squishier, right? That's what happens with the water that creatine attracts within the muscle. So it'll make your muscles appear fuller, rounder, uh, more developed. It's not the same as bloat. Bloat is outside of the muscle, under the skin, um, which looks totally different. It's not the same whatsoever. And so, and, and here's the problem. You keep putting in people's heads, creatine will make you bloated, creatine. And then you get a girl, especially a female, that's what they worry about, right? Then they take creatine and they see the scale go up a pound or two, which right. will happen, yeah. right? If you take creatine, you'll probably go up on the scale by about a pound or two, but it's not, again, it's not bloat, it's not body fat, it's intracellular fluid in the muscle. But they were, then they see that and they freak out. Oh my God, I, you're right, I'm bloated. I'm not gonna, I, let's stop taking this, no. Creatine is, of all the supplements that exist, all the non-hormonal supplements, in other words, all the supplements that are not anabolic steroids, it's the, by far, there's nothing that comes close to as effective, uh, the, the effects that creatine has on body composition, building muscle, burning body fat, improving performance. It has health benefits. It's good for the heart. Uh, it's good for the brain. So it's, it's a supplement that I pretty much recommend to anybody to take. You don't have to take it, by the way. It's still a supplement, so it's not as important as food and all that stuff, but it's one of those supplements that everybody could probably benefit from with very small exceptions, right? People with kidney disease or some people just, their gut doesn't respond well to it. But aside from that, it's a great supplement to take, whether you're cutting or gaining.